So it's no secret that Rise and Sunbreak have been pretty divisive as Monster Hunter games. There are a multitude of reasons as to why it's divisive, but we're not going to go into all of them because I don't want to bring up controversial criticisms of the game unless I have solutions to them. And for the one that we're going to talk about today, I think I have one. So what am I talking about? Rise slash Sunbreak is a very fast paced game, not only in its flashy animations and increased monster attack speed, but it's also removing the slower pacing that some of the older games had. And I mean this in the sense that in Rise and Sunbreak, it takes a very short amount of time to get to the fighting part of the quest. To sum it up in a snappy way, if Monster Hunter is about hunting monsters, then Rise slash Sunbreak is about arena quests. There's no beginning, there's no end, there's just the big old middle bit of fighting. The bits of Rise and Sunbreak that a lot of people get frustrated by are created as weird knock-on effects from the decision to increase the pace of the game's quests. The biggest of these being Spirit Birds and Endemic Life. It wasn't a big deal in the base game, as most people just ignored Spirit Birds as a pointless waste of time. But Sunbreak has reversed this, and it seems like the majority of people now think that it's vital to go and gather Spirit Birds before running off to the monster. And unfortunately, that's got a lot of people frustrated. People are frustrated that Sunbreak is trying to force them to spend time gathering Spirit Birds before they're able to fight the monster. As a quick note, you'll probably have seen in the background footage of all my videos that when I go to hunt, I don't normally bother with Spirit Birds, even in Sunbreak. So if you see me doing some dumb things while gathering birds in this video, it's probably because I'm still figuring out optimal Spiri Bird routes and the like. As Sunbreak is currently, Spiri Birds seem to be either an overwhelming or completely non-existent aspect of hunting. Reading people's opinions online, the overwhelming majority of people either grab a full set of health birds before even encountering the monster, or they don't grab any at all. From a design perspective, I think this indicates a big problem with Spirit Birds. Players are either ignoring them completely or using them begrudgingly and killing the enjoyment of the game. So what were the devs' intentions when they included Spirit Birds? Now, I didn't develop the game, but I think it's pretty reasonable to suggest that the intention of Spirit Birds what as added extras that you could gain by traversing between areas in smart ways. Maybe you do some parkour to grab an extra spirit bird while chasing the monster to the next area. I think it makes a lot of sense to view spirit birds kind of like the item boxes on a Mario Kart track. They're a good reward to make moving between areas fun. But having to turn the car around, or go on a longer route just to pick up the things, isn't fun at all. But if the intention of Spirit Birds is to make getting from where you are to the monster more engaging, why are most people either ignoring Spirit Birds completely, or running a predetermined loop to gather all of them before then going to engage with the monster? What is stopping players from engaging with the system in an interesting way, rather than ignoring the system, or from feeling forced to use the system in a way that they don't really want to do? After thinking about that question for a while, the answer that I've been led to is the streamlining of hunts. Compared to previous titles, Rise and Sunbreak are very streamlined in how the hunts are carried out. You always start at the camp, you have extra camps spread about the map, 
you can always see where the monsters are on the minimap. All of those things are designed to cut out all of the non-combat prelude, letting you focus on monster fighting instead of finding your way to the monster. You're probably already thinking about how these two dynamics would clash with each other, but to really spell it out, one side, Spirit Birds, Endemic Life, Hunter Helpers, are trying to give more depth to the beginning of the quest when you travel to the monster, to make it more engaging. Trying to raise it up so that it's of equal importance to the actual hunting part of the quest. But on the other side, seeing monsters on the map, Buddy Recon, and monsters never really being that far away from a camp that you can teleport to, are all design decisions that are trying to cut out the beginning of the quest completely, so that you've only got the fight the monster bit of the quest. Both sides are having a tug of war, and it's leaving Spirit Birds in this awkward middle ground, where if you don't need to pick them up, you're not going to. And if you feel like you need to grab them, you're not going to enjoy the process of picking them up. At the start of this video, I mentioned that I had a fix for this. A way to make grabbing Spirit Birds feel less like a chore. A way to make Sunbreak feel less like an expanded arena quest, and more like the older Monster Hunter games. And I do. Sort of. You've got to pick a side on the tug of war. If you want to use Spirit Birds, don't use the ability to teleport to camps and go into your settings and hide the minimap. Now, before I get someone commenting that they like the camps and that they like seeing the monsters on the map, this video is not suggesting that those things are bad, but I am saying that they don't mesh well with what the other half of Rise is trying to do. And as a quick side note, if you prefer seeing the monster and using the camps, another valid answer to the Spirit Bird conundrum is to just ignore Spirit Birds. Getting back on topic, making Spirit Birds fun. If you can see where a monster is on the map, going out of your way to pick up Spirit Birds is always going to end up being tedious because you're running in a big circle and all that time, it's just busy work preventing you from playing the actual game. But if you turn the map off, you don't know where the monster is. And that makes traveling around the map an important thing to do because you have to find the monster. Previously, you'd be gathering your birds and then you'd be running to the monster. This time, you're gathering your birds while looking for the monster. It's no longer a chore that you have to do before you can start the hunt. Because using Spirit Bird Roots to quickly find the monster is now the best way to get to the second part of the hunt. I want my videos to come across as fair as possible, so you're probably not going to be able to get a full set of health birds before you find the monster just by turning the map off. But you are going to get a lot more than you would by just blindly running towards the monster while looking at the minimap. Might also be a bit controversial, but a full set of health birds is completely overkill anyway. But if you're skeptical about getting enough health birds before fighting the monster, I recommend just trying it out. It's not hard to turn off the minimap, and then you just go and grab an investigation of a monster that you're unfamiliar with. When you're in the quest, don't do a Spirit Bird run before searching for the monster. And instead, use your knowledge of Spirit Birds to efficiently grab them while hunting for the monster. Maybe try running up to a high vantage point to see where the monster is. Or maybe there are spots on the map that you can see lots of other areas from. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how fresh the game feels when you do this. And that's what this video is really about. 
This is roughly the point when most people start to burn out of the game. And I know from personal experience that the way Monster Hunter burns you out tends to come in the form of, I really want to play Monster Hunter, but I want it to feel fresh. So hopefully this video has given you a good way to combat any stale, burned out feelings that you might have and give you the taste of freshness. If we're lucky, this video will be coming out just after the next Dev Diary. They've already revealed Brown Espinas, so I'm excited to see what's coming up in the future. If we have a bunch of cool new reveals, I'd love to know your thoughts about them in the comments. Normally, I'm an in-depth Lance channel, but I like to spread my wings every now and again, do something less Lancey. So feedback on this kind of video, if you like it, if you want tweaks to it, that sort of thing would be great. If Lance content or content like this sounds appealing to you, maybe consider subscribing. If you liked the video, please like the video because it really helps the channel out. But most importantly, I want to thank you for watching. See you next time.